Hello, calculus fans. We're going to look at an example where we're going to use Stokes' theorem to compute a line integral. So our example is to use Stokes' theorem to evaluate the line integral of negative y cubed dx plus x cubed dy minus z cubed dz. And here c is going to be the intersection of the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 4 and the plane 3x plus 2y plus z equals 6. Let's go ahead and assume that the orientation of the curve C corresponds to counterclockwise motion in the XY plane. That is, as you go around C, if you were to project C into the XY plane, you'd be going in a counterclockwise direction. And that's our usual orientation anyway. All right, so our curve C bounds the surface Z equals 6 minus 3X minus 2Y. It actually bounds lots of surfaces, but that's a pretty simple surface that it bounds. And that's for the values of x, y that are in the set D. And D is just a projection into the x, y plane of the circle and its interior. So that's the, the disk of radius 2 centered at the origin. And of course, let's let f be equal to the field negative y cubed x cubed, negative z cubed. All right, that comes from the components that you see in the integral. Now if we compute the curl of f, we'll get 0, 0, 3x squared plus 3y squared. You should double check this to make sure that this is really the correct thing for the curl of f. So Stokes' theorem tells us that the line integral of the field with components negative y cubed x cubed and negative z cubed is equal to the surface integral of the curl of f. Now remember that we're integrating over a surface that can be described by z equals g of xy. In particular, it's z equals 6 minus 3x minus 2y. So we can use this formula that says that the surface integral of f dot ds is equal to the double integral over the parameter region d of negative p dg dx minus q dg dy plus r dA. p, q, and r are the components of the field that we're integrating. Remember that we're integrating curl of f, and that had zero components for the first two components. So the only thing we're going to integrate is the last component. So that tells us that the line integral we're interested in comes out to the integral over d, the double integral over d, of 3x squared plus 3y squared dA. All right, that can be computed in polar coordinates. And it's actually a really straightforward computation. If you work it all out, you'll end up with 24 pi. There's really nothing to this computation. Okay, that's all for now.